Hello, this is Team 4082B, and this is an explanation of our world robot. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the motor distribution. And as you can see, there's four motors, and on this side of the drive, it's symmetrical on the other side. And three of the four motors are always connected to the drive, which is um, because of transmission. The high speed gear in the transmission is 600 RPM and the low speed is 120 RPM. We use one pneumatic per side to shift the transmission. And then that's driving the 2.75 inch wheels, which we have four of on each side. And they're all geared together. And then the other motors on each side are the ones in the front here, which uh, go into a PTO mechanism. And from there, they either shift to the drive or it shifts to the ring mech and the lift. And the ring mech and lift are connected between one ratchet. So the motor on the left side here, when it spins in the forwards direction, it spins the ring mech up. And then when it spins backwards, it lifts the lift up. And the motor on the other side is always powering the lift up and down. So we have a two motor lift up, one motor lift down, and then one motor ring mech up. So there's there's a series of ratchets which allow the the one motor to be used for the two outputs. The first ratchet you can see right there. So when the motor spins in one direction, the ratchet to the lift slips. And then the other ratchet underneath here, you can see it's slipping right there when the lift goes up and that motor, that motor is then helping. So, and then as for the ring mech, um, it's all, it, it picks up the rings with the, the tank tread and the top or the bottom end is spring loaded up so that any stacks of rings don't jam it and it, it can lift up and go over them. And the chain is all tensioned on the side here perfectly so that it, it keeps a constant tension as it lifts up and down. And, and yeah, that's, that's the whole bottom side of the ring mech and it works, works really well for picking up the rings off the floor. So, and then as for the lift, it's, the lift runs at, uh, what is it? 20 RPM? No, I don't even 17. know. 17, 17 RPM. That's the one. So, um, so the lift runs at 17 RPM. It's about 10 inches long. So we have the two motor lift with a 17 inch lift. It has a lot of torque on when lifting since it's really short. So we get a lot of power able to outpower any other robot. And, and then it's just a, a really simple four bar that uh, has, you know, C channel on the bottom and an angle on the top. And then on the front of that is the, the claw and the goal cover. So the claw is a pretty um, unique locking claw, which we came up with. And, and when the, it's two piston powered. So when it closes, this joint here over centers, and then um, it can't be back driven and opened up. So I can, I can show you that there. It closes, that joint is over centered, and now it can no longer lift up. And, and that's just about it for the claw. It's, it's a little um, design which we've like mastered throughout the season with many different um, iterations, but it works really well for us. We've almost never had any problems. I don't think we lost a single, um, we didn't lose a single goal at Worlds at all. So it worked, it worked really well. And then the next thing we have is our two piston goal cover, which along with being a goal cover, it also has a lock on the front. So as the goal comes in, it pushes open those levers on each side and then they will fold shut and then it can no longer pass through that slot there. And it's powered with the two pistons so that we have extra power going down at the beginning so that we don't have to worry about the bouncing from the goal cover falling down as much as uh, a single piston would. And, and yeah, that we have little wedges on the front to, to help 
get under other other goal covers, but that about sums it up for the for the goal cover. So the next really important mechanism on this robot, which not many people know about, is what we call the kaboomers. So it's these these little levers on each side that are connected to the the drivetrain with the gears, but but these gears have teeth notched out of them so that um, they can be connected to the drive and then if it spins to a certain point they're disconnected. So what we do with them is at the beginning of every match we will we will load them up, rotate them down with these 18 rubber bands on the top which all pull down and then there's this little hook on the front which we hook onto one of the bolts on the, the wheel there. So what happens is at the beginning of the match, as soon as the, the drive starts spinning, that, that hook releases and then those levers lift up and the teeth engage on the drive and those 18 rubber bands pull the levers back, which causes the, the robot to be accelerated forward with all that, that force and which helps move our 26 pound robot towards the center goal even faster because we need to be able to beat other teams and we do that by having these kaboomers. And then, and I'll, I'll show you it deploying right now. So you can see it, it really helps move it along. And that was only with the one side too, so they make a big difference in the end. And the next thing to talk about is the back base lift. So it's a pretty standard 2775J mech. It's, it's really no different than theirs. A few modifications to, to get it to fit on our robot. But, um, I mean, it's, it's fairly common. It uses the, the same pistons to clamp as it does to tilt it back. So um, we're saving air. And then, yeah, so we can open it up like that. And just slide a base in there. And it latches on and lifts it up. And I guess we're a little low on air now, but um, then it, it pushes it right up into the ring back there. So we can load the rings now. And then, yeah, we can score many rings efficiently with that. The next part of the robot, which might've been the most complex part that we had to build is the toggle mech. So it's a, it's a four bar reverse two bar with a slide on the top. And it was really tough to get it all to fit in size, but the, it, it folds down with these gears. This is the, the four bar here and the two bar. So they both um, counter rotate to fold it down. And then the slides fold in back like that and then the rubber bands shoot it forward. So when we fold it all the way down on the robot, it, it folds down on both sides and the, the back slides in to fit in 18. And then we hook it on with these pneumatics on each side. These hooks latch onto the four bar and the slide to keep it from extending and lifting up. And then um, that's, that's about it. I think we have 24 rubber bands on each side that help to deploy the tall goal mech. So it, it's pretty heavy. It takes a lot of force, but uh, we almost, I don't think we've never really had a problem with it deploying, which worked really well. And we start the match with our three match loads on, on one of the fingers. And then we have these little wedges on each side that when the piston goes up, they spread out. So we can lock those rings on and they, they can't come off until we release them. And then at the start of the match, these fingers fold inwards so that, and, and they hook on, on this bolt here so that we can start within the 18 inch size restriction. And the other finger is just empty for now. And the one other major 
thing about this robot is everything can fold down, including this ring mech, which has a, a break in the middle where it folds down and the hood folds up so that everything can fit below, I think it's about 13 inches on the top. And then, so everything folds down really low, which allows us to start underneath the tilted platform at the beginning of the match, which gives us a more direct path to the center tall goal and saves us time so that we don't have to be as fast as a team that starts to the side of the goal, or the, not the goal, the platform. So, and this all unfolds by opening up the back base lift. So as soon as I open it up, the, the ring mech opens up and then we can deploy the fingers back by locking them. And then the, the one more thing that this does, so we have to load that left side of the robot and that's done by with this piston in the back, which swings in the, the finger there underneath the ring mech. And then that allows us to pick up rings in the front, just like we would with a normal goal, except it then deploys them onto the finger and go along this line of rings here. And then there we go, we have the four rings. And they're all loaded up. Not every single one goes on, but it works most of the time. So the last thing that we do is get the, the tall girl in the front, and lock on the girl cover, and then we can pick it up. We can still do everything we normally can. We can balance them on the platform if we want, whatever. But then what we can do is deploy the tall goal mech, which releases those locks and allows everything to unfold. Just like that. And the one last thing that we do to align the tall goal is folding up the goal cover with that lock on the front causes the, um, the goal to tilt back into the fingers, just like that. And then we can deploy them and they all go on. And that's how we score our points. And then we can still lift up. We can do everything a normal robot can, just with the toggle rings. And yeah, so that sums that up.